All right, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the three most important things to look for when you're trying to basically outsource your the management of a sales rep to a consultant or a trainer or a head of sales. Um, and basically the three things to look for, are the three red flags that most people don't, most founders, business owners, coaches don't look for. Um, and I've seen these mistakes done multiple times where a company would go through this long journey of trying to find somebody to take over their sales process and their sales teams and they continue to churn through leaders um, or sales managers because they don't know either they don't have the experience or they don't know what to look for so um, my name is Wynn I uh, led a sales team uh, that consists of both closers and appointment setters and we grew the team uh, with the sales uh, from $300,000 a, a month to $800,000 a month and ultimately to a million dollars a month by having a awesome fantastic recruiting the right people and managing them in the right way uh, and we did that in in a span of six months and we thought we do that in 12 um, okay so the very first red flag of uh, a sales leader or a trainer that's gonna help you if they're not willing to get on the phone and sell with your team um, either because they're too busy or they think they're it's below them or they're not willing to do that for whatever reason that's the very first red flag in the first 30 days of joining your team if they're not planning on getting on the phone with you or, or with your prospects that's a red flag right there um, and I've seen this done mistake made over and over and over again where a company will bring on a founder will bring on a, a sales manager and it's been six months up to a year where somehow these sales manager would find time to do anything but actually getting on the phone with prospects huge red flag um, that's the first one the second one is if they are willing to get on on sales calls but they are not closing deals I mean I don't know what else to tell you but sales uh, leaders should be able to close even if they're not the best sales rep so what I found is the best sales reps don't always make great sales leaders uh, or managers right as you might already be aware of that um, some closers are meant just to be closers and stay closers and there's nothing wrong with that um, and some closers don't want to move into a, a management role because there's they probably can make more money being a, a, an individual closer uh, however a sales leader should be willing to and should be delighted to and should feel the necessity to get on the phone um, within the first 30 days with their reps whether that's setting or closing because that's the only way for them to learn the industry the the particular prospects that, that you have and your clients and how they can coach your your team members there's no uh, no no such thing as what I call armchair sales management right um, that might exist in the corporate world but most of the people that I work with can't afford shouldn't be uh, okay with armchair management um, gotta get in the field um, that's the first thing if they're getting in the field they're not closing more than 10 20 percent also <laughs> not a good sign right um, and the last thing that I would talk about this is more for your reps than for for you as a manager is or as a, as a leader or a founder is your sales manager should be spending a lot of time with your reps coaching them so half of the job of a sales leader um, should be spent on coaching your your individual rep so what that means is specifically speaking they have to be listening to sales calls that your teams does or your or your prospecting calls um, to provide coaching and feedback for your team it's a very hands-on thing the other thing is your sales manager or leader better be hosting um, uh, daily huddle and weekly trainings for both of your teams and if your sales manager does not set a high expectation of, of performance and participation and energy for your team no one else will and it will actually lower the productivity of your team um, by having a, a non-performing underperforming crappy sales manager and I've seen companies that went through six or five or six sales managers <laughs> and uh, uh, th for some reason it just doesn't work out uh, for this for these three reasons there um, so that's a really quick piece on on sales manager the other thing I will say 
is sometimes you, if you're hiring a, a brand new um, uh, sales rep, either setter or closer, and also you bring on somebody to train them, there is such thing as beginner's luck. So what I found very often is when you're starting a new setter um, or closer, and I've been in this situation myself, the first week or two, they absolutely crush it. For some reason, it's like, like me bringing my wife to the casino, like she would actually win <laughs> a, a, a bunch of money, um, uh, for like playing for the first time. So uh, for some reason, this happens to seller as well, where the first couple of weeks, like they will make 10 phone calls and book four meetings. It's awesome, they love it. And they have, they go, they have this high, they're like, wow, this is awesome, I'm gonna make money, I'm gonna <laughs> make bank. And then um, it actually will typically kind of dies off. The momentum dies off, um, and they go into a slump where they make a hundred dials and they make they talk with two people. Um, the same thing will happen to your sales manager as well. So if you're starting somebody brand new um, as a setter or a, a rep, and you're starting somebody as a sales manager and everything's going great the first week or two, it's not typically yet the work of uh, the training or the coaching, right? What you want to do is you want to see how they perform post or after those. Uh, initial period so that's one th one thing to watch out for the last thing I will say about having someone to come in and train and manage your team is it should be longer than 30 days um, it probably shouldn't ever end but if you have a really good flow and if they are very very um, process oriented which they should be is there should be a, a ramp time where they get really busy in the beginning with training and coaching your team, and then it should level off, meaning it should take less work further down the road. So there's no there's no uh, arrangement where you're gonna pay somebody to come in and train their team and coach their team and even ongoing management of the team, that it should be a full-time thing forever, unless they're also in there growing your team to uh, a number of reps as well. If they're just coming in to train your two reps that you've got, um, there should be an end date to that, and then ongoing um, should be a lot less uh, time and management uh, in terms of uh, of what it what it takes to 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 maintain and uh, slightly uh, improve the performance. Um, now, the caveat to that is unless you're bringing on somebody to actually help you grow from zero to two reps, and then from two reps to ten reps, like I did, like I did, uh, while learning at the same time, that took a lot of work. However, if they're like, if you're like, hey, I got two reps, I just need them to, um, to perform uh, uh, well to certain KPIs, the initial arrangement probably should be between 60 days or eight weeks to 16 weeks, and that should get most of the work out of the way. And then ongoing management should be a lot less work. It shouldn't go away completely, but it should either be handed back to you or if you're busy and you don't want to do that and you want to focus more on closing or on a product or, or delivery or success um, is you should have that manager manage, manage team on a part-time basis or if they are working with other clients, you should actually have your setters be connected with other setters from other companies to continue their, their um, development and uh, training and ongoing coaching. So that's it on uh, the red flags to look out for when looking for a sales trainer or a sales manager or a sales leader.